Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Terran Mods Premiere, because apparently the Premiere developers are off getting coffee or something. So today I have three brand new awesome awesome features to share with you. Just going to go through them real quick here. Number one is using the right click to move the playhead through the timeline. So if you are able to click anywhere on the timeline you like, look at that. Oh, beautiful. You can just move that around anywhere you want. Next feature that I have to show you I'm very proud of, and I call it the single button rescale. Check this out. Bam. Oh, instant rescale. And then I can do it again. Bam. Instant rescale back down. Okay, well, it's actually kind of lagging a bit right now, but you get the point. What it is is basically I can press one button and then move the mouse to change the scale of a clip. Okay, next feature. What have we got here? Oh, recall saved transitions. Oh my goodness. Guess what? I figured out a way to save transitions and recall them at any time with a single keyboard shortcut. Let's just take a quick look at that here. Click one button, shabammo, and and motion control works perfectly. Check that out. I'm going to do another one. Impact wipe. I mean flash. And motion control. Oh, it works so well. Okay, so I'm going to show you all of those. Also, I have updates to two of my other scripts. Um, effect search bar, I fixed up a little bit. Also, I'm just going to give you the accelerated scrolling script because the .exe was kind of problematic. So this is good code anyway. Okay, so I'm not going to explain everything in perfect detail. There should be enough comments inside of these scripts for you to be able to figure out what the heck is going on. But basically, here's the idea. So for the use the right mouse button to move the playhead and timeline, this is a feature that I decided that I wanted because, again, left clicking up here is very, very prone to error. You might accidentally click on these. You might accidentally click on these. That's awful. And when you're looking somewhere else, you don't want to have to be so precise. There's actually, I don't know how many pixels that is, but it's like two cursor widths and that's not enough. So now you can right click, you can right click anywhere and basically what it does is it searches for a very particular color. Let's get Windows Spy out here. These colors as you can see 252525 and uh, 4C, 4C, 4C and so on, these colors actually don't show up anywhere else in Premiere which is very lucky because then we can use that along with right click to say oh hey if you see any of these colors and here they are these are the colors that I've determined are all on my timeline. If you see any of these, then I want you to send Z, sleep for 16 milliseconds, and then send Z again. And then the tooltip is not necessary. But basically, that's all that it does. Okay, it, if you see the colors, then send Z until I unclick the right mouse button. This little tilde here ensures that the right mouse button will be clicked as normal. Uh, within everywhere else, it will continue to function normally unless there's a color underneath it, which is fantastic. I use this one all the time. It's fantastic. It works really, really well. It's not perfect. You might be wondering, why do I have it on the right mouse button and not, you know, some other button? Well, my mouse doesn't have macro buttons on it. I wish that it did, but the mouse that I have is very good for my RSI. Unfortunately, it's just a regular three button mouse. So if you have a mouse that has macro buttons on it, chain it to that. Don't chain it to the right mouse button. I just did this because I had to compromise. Okay, so that's that one. And again, all these scripts will be available for you in the description. So I'm not going to go through them in great detail. Here's all of the colors that I've determined. And by the way, you will have to figure out your own colors because guess what? My appearance is actually brighter than the default. See, if I mess this around, all the colors change completely, and the default brightness is actually super dark. So if I try to get back to where I was, it's not going to be correct. I have to hit cancel here to get my colors back to the way that they were. Yes, they're back to the way that they were. So your colors may vary. Okay, next up is the auto scale. Oh my god, I love this feature. Again, let me just show you how it works. You can be on a graphic, you can be on something, anything. Let's just go here to a bunch of Lego here. And I just, I'm not even going to click on it. I don't need to. I just have to hover the thing over it. Press F6 and then shabam, instant rescale. Uh, it's kind of lagging right now because my computer is out of RAM or whatever. 
But the whole point is you can scale instantaneously and look, the cursor goes right back to where you started. Oh, it works so monumentally well. Adobe, this is a feature that I want in the program. Guess what? It's never going to happen. That's why I programmed it myself rather than asking for it. So basically how this one works, um, it's actually really complicated. This is the most complicated one I've ever done. Basically, you've got like a ton of functions. They're all nested. It's very horribly sloppy code. I know it works on F6 because why not? Um, so first up, it blocks the mouse and keyboard input so that you don't screw it up. It sends a little tooltip so that I know where the cursor was. That's not important. Saves the coordinates, gets the coordinates of the effect controls panel, which for me is window class two, it may be different for you. Moves to the expected triangle location. And if the triangle is like this, it will know that because it's on a very particular pixel where if the triangle is open, the pixel color will be different versus if the triangle is closed. You see that? Look at this. Right there, it's AD, AD, AD. And when it's closed, it's D, 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 D. Right? You see how, that's how that works? Or A2, 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 whatever it is. You see? And just like that, I can detect if the triangle is open or closed. And if the triangle is closed, then I'll click to open it. And if not, then I won't click. And I'll go on to the next step, which is to search for this little scale uh, text. And one of the clever things that this script does is if you don't have anything selected and there's nothing up here, it'll know because it can see that that's color 31313131. And so it'll quickly press Control P and then Control P again. Because what that does for me is it toggles selection follows playhead. This is a feature that I absolutely hate, so I always turn it off. But if you have it on, it will very conveniently select only the very topmost clip. Whereas if you use the uh, select clip at playhead, it will select everything, which I don't want to happen. So if I just want to select one, I'll toggle it on and then back off again so that it will select just the top. So it'll do that if you don't have anything selected, then it'll know that you have this. And then it'll open the triangle if it needs to be opened. And then it will search for the scale text. It will actually search within a certain area for exactly this image, which I have screenshotted and saved right here. That's what it searches for, and that will match this. Okay, So it searches for that, and if it finds it, then it will go on to the next step, which is to search for a very particular color. Because what I need is for the cursor to click on here, and then I can move up and down and left and right and so on to change that scrubbable hot text. But I can't just search for the picture of 100.0 because it will sometimes be different. So the only thing that I can do is first search for scale and then search right until I run into a color. And guess what color this is? Actually, you don't have to guess because we know from Windows Spy. For me, I have determined that the color 35A1A8 is a good color to search for. It searches for within 25 degrees of certainty. RGB, this is important. If you screw that up, it won't find it at all. And if it finds it, it will move to that location of where it knows that scrubbable hot text is. And then it will click the left mouse button down for you. And then it will keep holding it down until you release the scale key, which in our case is F6. So again, the long and short of it is it works exactly like this. Shabam. And look. I can instantly change the scale. Usually it's a lot less choppy. And then I let go and the mouse returns right to where it was and I can continue on. Also it has the effect of pressing the transform icon so that I have these excellent little handles if I want to change it any further. Oh my god, you guys, this works so, so well. I love it. And if you see me editing, you will see me use this feature all the time. Okay, moving on to another fantastic work of code by me, which is the recall transition function. So for this one, you're going to need a second monitor or maybe a third monitor. Okay, this is completely ridiculous. So basically what this is, is check this out. I can click here, I can click one button, shabam, and it just, well, you can even makes a transition right there. And check this out, I'm gonna click this, Oh, check it out. You can even Oh my god, it works so well. Okay. Again, what that's doing is it's sending the mouse down to the third monitor down here. I'm just going to drag this over so you can see. 
it will click right here so that it's in this second timeline, which is down here. And then it will go up here because it will know that that is the uh, Drover Lord Window Class 23 in this case. By the way, this changes all the time, depending on how many timelines you have in here. Oh, look, it's, it's already at Class 24 because I clicked into here. So now this is Class 25. Click back here. Now this is Class 24. This is Class 18. This is Class 2. So this is a mess. Oh, look, now it's back to Class 25. You see? So anyway, it has to ask the cursor, what Class NN is this? Once it figures that out, it will go here, and then according to my pre-programmed variable constants, it will go to the exact coordinates of any of these transitions on the screen, and it will grab that, and it will copy, and then it will go back over to the other screen, and it will paste. And uh, this has to be kept at V6 at the top, and it has to be kept all the way scrolled to the left, and it has to be kept only two uh, zoom stops out. Otherwise, all the variable constants don't work. So anyway, I'm going to show you the code for that real quick. So like I said, it will move the mouse to the... This really depends upon the um, coordinate mode. you got to go to the screen coordinate mode first, and then move the mouse all the way down here. Again, information got by Windows Spy. Let's just check it out right now. Uh, yeah, you can see absolute position is like 7,000 and then 3,000, okay? So then you go there, wait a little bit, click, and then deselect anything that you might have accidentally selected. Wait a little bit. Change coordinate mode to window, because apparently that's what you need to do. Otherwise, it might end up back on monitor number two. Okay, so it'll get the class NN of that particular panel that you are on. So that panel always needs to be in the bottom half of the screen, in my case. And then it will get the coordinates of where that panel is located, just in case it moves around a little bit, which it totally might. And then it will get the, uh, oh boy, this is just absurd obnoxiously complicated. Depending upon the single variable that you gave it as a parameter when you called this function, it will call all of these various different constants. And all of these I got by using another script and slowly going through and clicking on these one at a time while that information was saved to a notepad file. And then later I took that and copied it back in to the uh, auto hotkey script and then I labeled where all of these various things are. So all of this was automatically captured although you could technically just write down the numbers yourself and do it that way and I realized that this is a major pain in the ass but it's totally worth it for me. So anyway once it gets those coordinates it will send the mouse to them it will click, it will copy the transition at those coordinates it will change the coordinate mode so that it goes back to the center screen, the primary monitor and then it will return to its original coordinates, click, paste the transition, give you back control, and you're done. So once again, let us go through and check that out. You guys, this works so well. Check this out. What if I want impact flash right here and I want it the specific length? Bam, I can push that button and it just works. Now you might be asking, why is it not centered? And I figured out that the reason for this is that the transitions are on the leftmost side of a single clip. So what I'm gonna do is change all of those so that they are in the center of two different clips. And then hopefully when I copy paste them, they'll show up in the center of whatever I paste onto. By the way, impact flash and impact push are all free transitions that you can get from filmimpact.net. So anyway, this is where the actual magic happens. This is where the function is called with its parameter. This one is the fifth variable from the top, so let's go take a look at that. This is the X coordinate of transition number five and the Y coordinate of transition five. So it'll grab that and check it out. This is control and then the numpad. But I don't actually use my primary keyboard's numpad. No, sir, I'm using a second keyboard for all of these. And how I'm doing that is with HID macros. And all that this does is very simple, is when you press the numpad 3, and then when it gets that, it'll send the numerical keyboard sequence, control numpad 3, which uh, I could do on my primary keyboard, but I could just do it automatically on the secondary keyboard. This is not the best way to do it. Frankly, the whole interface of HID macros is really shitty, and I'm totally, completely running out of modifier keys to use. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna try to get something better than HID macros, but in the meantime, this is what I use, and so like 5 is uh, impact flash and so on and so forth. So, 
there are all of the new things that I've programmed. I know it's a complete garbagey mess in here. Hopefully my little comments are enough to guide you so that you can set this up for yourself. And hopefully you will send a Premiere wish form to the bros over at Adobe to get them to put these features into the program officially so that I don't have to do it with AutoHotKey anymore. But guess what? This will never happen. So you might as well just learn to code yourself because they won't do it. So anyway, uh, another update on my previous features. I have added this section to the script so that it will click in the middle of the effects panel before it grabs that preset. And uh, by the way, this works astonishingly well. Let's say that I want to make this a little bit brighter. Single keyboard shortcut, shabam, works perfectly. And I actually have different ones set up. This is a blank Lumetri uh, thingy. This one is a little bit brighter, and this one is even brighter. So I can just hit any of those. They work perfectly every single time. Also, the accelerated scrolling.exe that I linked you guys to was setting off malware bytes. So just grab the auto hotkey code. I'll host this somewhere else. There's obviously nothing terrible in this code but the .exe might have something. So you can just grab this code from me, and this still works astonishingly well. And uh, that's it. That's the whole, uh, you know, Terran teaches you how to mod Premiere episode for today. Once again, I'd just like to request that you send this over to Adobe so that they can ignore it at their heart's content. I don't know why I bother, but I'm going to keep doing it anyway. When you're working every day for eight hours with Premiere, its deficiencies become extremely obvious. Why is this not already a thing? Look, bam, there it is. How hard is that, you guys? How hard is that? And also applying presets, like bam. Why is that so hard? <laughs> Why don't you just give us that feature? Ugh. Whatever, I have the feature. You guys can have the feature. All the code is right here. Uh, I'm going to continue to be a thorn in Adobe's side as long as I possibly can. Maybe one day, maybe one day we'll get these things for real. Until then, see you later. See you next time. I'll surely have more to complain about coming up soon.